welcome to the Soap Bible Study video series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We are working our way through a few of the smaller prophets of the Old right. Testament. Yeah. And uh, we've done um, Amos and Obadiah over the past two uh, weeks. Yep. Right? yep. Now and we've got another two. We've got right. another two, um, but technically one of them is not a prophet like right. the other. So we're going to do right. Jonah this week. And uh, we'll start uh, Lamentations. Yeah. Briefly, briefly intro it. We won't talk about Lamentations too much. We'll do that next next time. Um, but this time we want to talk about Jonah. Yeah. Well, w when you think of Jonah, the first thing that comes to most people's minds are some guy that gets eaten by a whale. Yep. Right. That's, that's the whole story. Basically. Yeah. It, exactly. Right? <laughs> and and well, that's the problem, right? Because we'd be wrong on two counts. <laughs> right. uh, first, it doesn't say a whale. Nope. In there, right? It says a big fish. Yeah. A little bit of a difference, and there and are different, a, and there are different Hebrew words. If it, yeah. if, if he meant a whale, yeah, he could he have used a he could have a used different a different word, word for whale. Yeah. yeah, and then the second thing is that's really a small part of the whole. Story. It really is on, on what's going on, what's going on, and to me, I, I think the really interesting part is God has compassion on a Gentile nation. Ah, is this the first? Is this one of the only? Uh, there's, I mean, certainly God has compassion on yeah. who He has compassion on, but but in the Jewish Bible, this doesn't happen a whole lot. Yeah, um, it's interesting because Jonah is the only Old Testament prophet who actually goes to another land. Yeah. All of the other prophets, I mean, like Amos and Obadiah, they're prophesying against these, you know, some of these nations, but yeah, they're doing but within, it from within Israel. Yeah, that guy's bad. Yeah, exactly. So, so what happens is Israel hears God is going to judge them. Okay, so it's a good right. reminder for them too. Jonah, he doesn't do that. Now he is a prophet in Israel, but God actually yeah. sends him out of the country, which is really unheard of. Right. I mean, from the Old Testament, right. and we see why. Too. <laughs> uh. So, so the first thing is, when did Jonah serve, right? And he served at the same time as as Hosea. Yeah. Uh, so in the in the seven hundreds, he served at the time of um, about Jeroboam the second. Right. So he actually prophesied about him, right? That he yeah. would he would uh, restore the lands. Yeah. So at the same time as as um, Amos, maybe a little bit before. Yeah. 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 So these are all happening. Yeah. Okay, so we know that as a prophet, really their only job is God's going to give you a message. You need to accurately take that message to who it's intended for. Yep. And we see a lot of a lot of prophets saying, "Look, don't shoot the messenger because <laughs> that's what happened." Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm only I can only say what God tells me. I can only do what God tells me. Right. And it was different here. Yeah. Well, there were some some prophets that God really, I mean, sort of messed with them. Some yeah. of the things he expected uh, Jeremiah to do, or Ezekiel to do, or Hosea to do, yeah. you know, we're like, wow, that's more than just carrying a message. You yeah. know, I mean, we're talking like, you know, word, you know, physical examples of things going on. But yeah, Jonah, a little bit different here. Yeah. So it starts out. God tells uh, Jonah to go to Nineveh, right, and and he wants him to announce judgment on those people. So where, where's Nineveh? Nineveh was in what's it's in modern day Syria. So if you're in Israel, and he was in northern Israel, mm -hmm. okay. So if you're in northern Israel, you're going to go north and off to the uh, east a little bit, about right. 500 miles, give or take. Right, right. Which okay. is a long way. Okay. I mean, just... Yep. Yeah. So this was this is actually a huge city as part of the um, Assyrian Empire. Assyrian right? Empire. Yeah. At that time. And Assyria had been coming in and they had done these sort of marauder type hit and run attacks in as, as they're trying to spread out right as they're trying to right. grow you know all over the place including in galilee where jonah's from okay so it's very possible and i'm speculating here right but it's very possible maybe he lost some friends or family maybe yeah, he, he had been hit affected. up maybe yeah he was affected in so there is absolutely no way he was going to do anything to help these people. Right. None. Right. So the bad guys, huge city. Um, some estimates are 600,000 people. In Jonah, we see that it takes three days to walk around the city. Yeah. So so it's a big city. Yep. Walls supposedly 100 foot high, 50 feet 
thick. Yep. And you know, you you think that, but think how big that is. Yeah. This place was protected. This yeah. place was a, was a fortress. One of the stories. One of the stories about cities like this is that the walls were so thick. Uh, uh, obviously, battering rams not going to do right. anything against that. But they could run chariots around the top of the wall, right? So that they could get a. You know, if it takes three days to get around, or you know, whatever, it it uh, they could run chariots around on top of the wall. Plenty of space. They're not going to fall off, and they can get to different parts of the wall for defense. Yeah, quicker, oh, quicker. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Nice, nice. So, so Jonah, Jonah, his big worry was that this group of people were were going to hear the message and repent. Yep. And it kind of plays into what you said. Something bad had to happen, and he did not want these guys to repent, and he was not going to carry the message because his theology about God, in a sense, was correct. I mean, later on in the in the narrative yeah. in chapter four, he's like, "I knew you would forgive them <laughs> if they repented, and I couldn't let that happen." Yeah, yeah. I, a, lot, a lot of eyes show up in there. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So Jonah, um, instead of going northeast, hops on a boat, which, uh, by the way, uh, Assyria or, or the city. To, um, is not land or is not, uh, not on the anywhere sea. near the water, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it's on the Tigris River, but <laughs> well, it's uh, other yeah. than that, yeah. So yeah. he hops in and is uh buys the ticket for as far away as he can and he's headed towards Spain, or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so if you think of the known world at the time, he's on the Mediterranean Sea and you know, think of Rock of Gibraltar, Spain, you know, that yeah. where the Mediterranean meets the Atlantic Ocean. That's like the edge of the known world, right. as far as as far as uh, most people knew at that time, um, uh, the, or the common person anyway, because there were navies and so Solomon's navy had gone all over. Right. Um, but that was the point where like you met the edge of the earth. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I will go, I'll go there, there, right? And it's five so... times. By the way, just fun fact: it's five times further that direction. Then he was supposed to, it was 500 miles this way. It was 2,500 yeah. miles this way. Yeah, so the big question, you know, obviously he was hiding. Yeah. But did he think he could get away with it? Obviously, because he tried. But, well, you know, it's interesting because the pagan gods, other civilizations, their gods were really limited. You know, there was the god of fertility. Okay. That's the only goddess of fertility. That's the only thing she did. The god of wheat and the god of rain and the god of thunder. And, and they had gods who had power on land but not on sea. In their country but not out of their country. On the sea but not on the land. And so the fact that he didn't go south, he could have stayed in the land. He could have gone to Egypt. He could have gone across, you know, whatever. Yeah. He hopped on a boat to sail. Is it possible that he already had been corrupted a little bit where I'm not on land. I'm not in the land. Oh, God is God not going to be anything. able to get to me. Oh, maybe, maybe. Well, it turns out God can, <laughs> right? All right. Um, so God sends this violent wind to swamp the boat. The sailors cried out and he's below deck sleeping. Which kind of reminds me of Jesus when he was when he rebukes the storm. I don't yeah. know if there's a parallel there, but it, I don't it, know if I've ever thought about that before. It kind of um, kind of sounds that way. So Jonah was asleep, and they cast lots to see who's at fault, and they figured out it's him. Yep. Yeah. So they go up to him, and Jonah doesn't lie. He says, "Yep, it's me. I'm running away from my God." Yeah. What do you think we should do? You should, you should throw me over. The only way to save your boat and save you is to get rid of me. Yeah, yeah. This guy literally has a death wish. It keeps showing up in this in this yeah. short book. So an honest, an honest answer, um, and he tells him about his God a little bit too. Yep. Um, interesting reaction with the crew on. Wait, you know we don't know a lot about this guy's God. Do we really want to risk throwing this guy overboard? You know we got to make sure if he's here. really a prophet. Like he says he is, and his God's yeah. mad at him. If we get rid of him, are we now yeah, accomplices? Exactly. <laughs> right. And right. he has to assure them, no, it's okay. God will protect you if you kill me. <laughs> it's like, and we're taking your word for this? So, well, so they throw him, over <laughs> so they throw him they... overboard? And, and, and they go on their merry way. So yeah. that's when the fish swallows Jonah. He's in the belly for three days. Um, I think the next sentence is he gets vomited on the shore. I love that. And we're done with the fish story. That's it. Uh, yeah, two well, two sentences I think. Yep, yep. Yeah. The whole the whole the whole fish story really yeah is about three verses, 
and it surrounds a prayer that he prays while he's in there. And that's it. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're done the whole... That's yeah. it. I do think there's a bigger piece there on, um, you know, we believe that the Bible is inerrant. We believe what the Bible says is true. How could a person possibly live in, in, a, in a big fish for yeah. three days? I yep. think that's where a lot of the speculation comes yeah, from. Yeah, and there is a fish that lives in the Mediterranean Sea. It's not a whale. It is a fish um, that has a mouth and a sort of a gullet that is large enough to hold a human adult. Hold a man? Yeah, yeah. Physically, it is yeah. possible. There's a debate whether he died and was resurrected. Did God supernaturally protect him alive for those three days? Whatever. I don't know that that necessarily matters. I don't think it matters. Um, Jesus referred to this as um, Jonah was gone for three days. I'm going to be gone for three days. He came back. I'm coming back. So he took that as a literal event. Right. And he made the connection. He didn't say that Jonah died or didn't die. Uh, of course, Jesus did. But right. um, but that's right. it's really the... Yeah, so you said he had a prayer in there. What was the what was the prayer? His prayer was, you know, I called out to the Lord to rescue me. No repentance. Not I'm sorry for running away. I'm not, you know, yeah, whatever. The full story. No, yeah. no. It's just you know, you you did this to me. Uh, you're punishing me. I get it. But I'd rather die. It's still it's still, um, I, it's still, I'd rather die. Okay. So um, if if you if you save me, I will offer a sac. I mean, verse nine. I promise to offer a sacrifice with public declaration of praise if you deliver me. Not I'm going to do what you told me to. do. Not I'm repenting. Yeah. Not not anything. Yeah. So God sends a message to Jonah. Go to Nineveh, and uh, he immediately goes. Yep. Right. So so. Um, and he's he's walking around there, and he says, at the end of forty days, Nineveh will be overthrown. Yeah, and you can see him not being happy, head down, <laughs> mumbling it maybe. But I'm sure he said it. I'm sure he said it out loud because he caught everybody's attention. Yeah, in there. Well, and, if I mean, okay, the story of a guy being puked up by a fish, yeah, probably is going to go faster than the guy at himself. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. when he shows up at your doorstep. Yeah, you may you may listen to him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So the people in Nineveh, they they believed in God, which which I thought was interesting, you know, because they're the bad guys, so obviously they can't believe in God. Of course, but, but that's not necessarily the case. And they repented, mm -hmm. and the king called for everybody to put on sackcloth. Yep. And, and he says, "Who knows? Maybe God will rethink this." Yeah. You know? uh, yep. Yeah. So he immediately knows this is a death sentence. So. All right, let's try. Yeah. And and just the amount of faith there from a Gentile king, in contrast to what we're seeing with Jonah, is, yeah. is really interesting. Yep. There. And Jonah was furious. Yeah. Yeah, the, angry doesn't cut it. Right? Uh, angry doesn't yeah. cut it. The, the Hebrew verbs, or the Hebrew uh, verbiage, I guess, in here is, I mean, we, we've got we've got these, he's ex, he was he was angry with an extreme anger, literally sort of what it yeah. says. He was angry with extreme anger. Then he was joyful with extreme joy. And then he was angry with extreme. I mean, this guy is just all, all over, over the, the place. place. Yeah. 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 So he's angry and, and he prays to God. And like you said, see, this is exactly why we didn't want this to happen. I, I, knew, I knew you, you were, were too gonna... nice, <laughs> which again feeds into that a personal yeah. thing happened yes uh, something to happened there. to him or his family or something yeah yeah and god like um says what my mom says are you really this angry <laughs> I mean, over this are you really this is where yeah you, this is the hill you want to be on and he was and he was yeah. he literally would rather die than breathe the same air as these people yeah he he doesn't even i mean we're not even talking i mean he can live 500 miles away he doesn't want to live on the same earth that right. these people are on. If God is going to let them live, then he better kill Jonah. Yeah. So Jonah Jonah physically need, physically leaves, and he goes out. I always picture him on a hill that, yeah, he, a can, that he can oversee. I don't, you know, it doesn't say that, but it seems like he can look into the city and see what's going on. Yep. And he wants to see how God's going to kill him. Which means that he parked out there for a month and a half in yeah. the desert. Yeah, in 40 days. Waiting for God to kill them. Yeah. Fuming the entire time. Right. And it's hot. Yep. 
and it seems to be hotter than hot there. Yep. Uh, well, you're and in the middle, middle of the Iraqi desert. Yeah, Syrian so he makes desert. a little shelter. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not sure how good that actually is. And then God causes a little plant to grow. Yep. Which is, like, so humorous. Yeah. And it provides some shade, and it delights Jonah. Yeah, with a great joy, yeah. exceeding great joy. Yeah, so this is, the, this is where the great joy yeah. comes in. Uh, they think it was a castor plant. Castor, you know, you get, like, castor oil in a yeah. castor plant. These huge leaves. Uh, and so it provided shade. provided a shape, but it still would have had to have been supernatural to grow up overnight, yeah. like that. Yeah. But yeah. Well, it didn't matter. It died the next <laughs> day. So and Jonah went. <laughs> God also sent a worm, killed the plant, and now Jonah's back and back, back in despair. Again. Yep. I'm as mad as I can possibly be. Yep. I and, would rather die. Yep. And then God, uh, as the payoff, God's like, really, you're that mad? Are you, you're mad about a plant that you didn't create, that you didn't help grow. Shouldn't I be concerned about Nineveh? Yeah. Um, you know, and the people and the animals, meaning God did create, God did help this place grow. Yeah. Hey, Jonah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. He says there's, there's more than 120,000 people who uh, it literally says do not know their right from their left. So are these children? Is it uh, the net translates it don't know right from wrong? Um, yeah. So e either way, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people here. And then so God tacks on, or at least the animals. Yeah. Can, can you, I mean, even can if you, you don't care about the... the people, can you at least care about the animals that are going to yeah. be destroyed here? Yeah. And that's the period. That's yeah. the and whole no thing. no answer. There's right. no answer. Right. Now. Which is kind of cool from the no answer standpoint. Of well, how does it play out? Yeah, because I mean, there are was, so many directions. It, it was written go. down, and we assume it was written down after the fact. So, yeah. you know, Jonah got to the point where he could write this down. You know, did he change? Did he grow? Right. But yeah, we, we don't know. I mean, there's right. a period. Right. So the application, you know, from us is, you know, not anything with a mustard plant or a castor <laughs> oil plant, uh, but more from the lines of, you know, where are we taking that hard stance with God? Yeah. That, is ridiculous seriously that's where you want to take your stand yeah um, they happen you know yeah. we are childish every now and then and and thank goodness our god is faithful patient gen gentile with us well and, and just ge and just the reminder like you said at the beginning i mean the, the compassion that he shows on people that we don't like that we hate right. there are things that go on all over the world that you know we're sitting in our comfy little places yeah, and those are bad I people would, yeah. and those are you know whatever it's like there's still people there's still children right. there's women there's children they may you know if it is no not knowing right from wrong these people maybe have never heard the gospel yet you know maybe our stance shouldn't be quite like Jonah maybe it should be more like well, they God. definitely haven't heard the gospel yet right because well, these we're, guys we're had free, right. Well, yeah. We're, yeah, we're free Jesus. So. <laughs> yeah, these guys had, but the yeah. people in today's world. Yeah, right, right. right. You know, right, exactly. It, it's easy to look around on the news and look around and you know, pick a place on the map. Those are bad people. Right. Uh, you know. Yep. All right. So that's the story of Jonah. Yeah. So now we want to get into Lamentations. The problem is. If we do an intro for Lamentations, it's going to take a whole lot of time. Yeah, we don't right. have anything for next week. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So what we're going to do is just kind of talk a little bit about Chapter 1, and then next week we'll actually do the intro for the book. Yeah. Which is a little bit backwards, and we're acknowledging that. And that's that. okay. Yeah. yeah. So Lamentations, I mean, short story. It was written by, uh, or short version, rather. It was written by Jeremiah, right. and it follows Jeremiah in the way our English Bibles order the books. It's only five chapters, and it's about Judah going into captivity with Babylon. Right. So I looked up a definition for, you know, lamenting, lamentations. What does it mean? A passionate expression of grief or sorrow. Yeah. And, you know, reading that... That's exactly what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can tell somebody is, is heartbroken and passionate about, about a loss and there's sorrow in there. And it's, it, uh, um, this may be one of the first times I actually read it, read it, you know, read it and spend a little bit of time with it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty some, heavy. There's some heart stuff in there. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty heavy. Um, now, you, you you found a verse, sort of like in where it yeah, says... It was lost. Hey, yeah, yeah. I found it. <laughs> yeah, so in Second Chronicles chapter 35, uh, uh, verse 25, it says, Jeremiah composed, composed laments for uh, Josiah 
which all the male and female singers use to mourn Josiah to this very day. It has become customary in Israel to sing these. They are recorded in the Book of Laments. So that's how we're saying that yeah. that is Jeremiah, right? Yeah. Right. Well, uh, uh, yeah, partially. The, and but there's some overlap between the book of Jeremiah and oh, okay. and Lamentations okay. too. But yes, Jeremiah recorded this. Now Josiah wasn't the last king of Judah, but he was like the last good king of Judah, basically. And yeah. you know you got a couple others, and then it's all over. Right. right. And I think everybody remembers that story. We, and I know we keep going back to it, but but we know that Israel had so many chances to repent and return to God, but they never fully did. Yep. God finally said enough. And, and he said, here's what's going to happen. Uh, the northern kingdom was wiped out by Assyria. And the southern kingdom with Jerusalem in it was wiped out by Babylon. I think, you know, 10% of the population uh, was taken into captivity. At least the first time. Yeah. 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 And we're probably going to put about 100, between 100 and 150 years between, between Jonah that. and Lamentations. Okay. In this jump that we're doing, Jonah, Assyria has not taken over northern Israel yet. Because they just repented. <laughs> yeah. And right. so now they will later on, you know, give it 30 or 40 years, they will. And then it's another hundred before Babylon takes over. And Jeremiah wrote Lamentations just before that. So we're, okay. we're doing a pretty major, you know, at least a century jump when yeah. we go from Jonah to Lamentations here. Yeah. All, right. All right. So, yeah, next week we'll come back and we'll actually spend some more time. Uh, just, just chapter one in Lamentations this week. Uh, next time we'll I spend some more time talking about the book of Lamentations, yeah. and there's some really neat things in there. Yeah, so take some time. Yeah, pretty Read excited it. about Read it. that. Kind of dwell on it a little bit. Too. Yeah. yeah, yep. So hopefully uh, this has been helpful to you. Let's uh, try to remember to think more like God than Jonah, <laughs> and uh, uh, everybody will be better if we do that. So uh, see you next time. Hope that you share this with your friends. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, hope it's helpful. Bye. Bye.